This video is sponsored by Brush Galaxy. Okay, in this tutorial, I'm going to break this painting down into steps that are way easier to follow than you might imagine, so that you can have a go at creating this and amaze yourself. Okay, so as I explained in the intro, I'm going to break this down into steps so you can learn about the painting techniques as well as the app that I'm using here, Procreate. However, I don't see any reason why you couldn't use a different app and a different tablet and still follow along. But in terms of the app Procreate that I'm using, I'm using the default A4 canvas, which is 297 by 210 millimeters at 300 dpi. And the color profile, again, comes within Procreate as one of the defaults which is the sRGB, and it's the one that ends in 2.1. Now, I'm going to be using various brushes. I try to restrict myself to the brushes that come free within the app. So within airbrushing, I'm going to be using the soft brush, the medium brush, and maybe the medium hard brush. Within materials, well, appropriately, I might just have a go at using this zombie skin brush. And within organic, I might use the rainforest brush. In terms of the colors, I've already pre-selected a color palette. I may add to it as I go along. And each of these colors has linked to it a hexadecimal code, which all you need to do is type it into this box and press enter. The color appears up here and then you can tap it and piece it together yourself. Each of these codes is listed down in the video description, so you just need to take a note of them. Or next to the codes is a link that takes you to my Patreon page where you can download the whole color file for free. And Patreon is also the place where you can gain access to extended versions of these tutorials, exclusive content, and of course support this channel. Thank you to everybody who has in the past or is currently supporting me. It makes a huge difference to this channel and it's much appreciated. And with all that said and done, we're going to get started. So on this A4 canvas, we've got it in the landscape orientation. We're going to go to our colors. We're going to choose the first color. We're going to drag from the color circle into the canvas area and flood fill. That gives us a very dark background, but we're quickly going to go to the second color. Go to our brushes, airbrushing, soft brush. I'm going to put the brush size up to 50% and 100% opacity. I'm just going to do a line down the very middle like that. I'm then going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur and blur it in to about the 70% like that. Then I'm going to go back to my layers, create a new layer, layer two, go to my colors. I'm going to skip a couple of colors. So I'm going to go to the fifth color, still with a soft brush with an airbrushing, still at 50% size and 100% opacity and just clip it off here at the bottom a little bit. Then again to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and then blur that in to about the 60%. Go to our layers and create a new layer. Go to our colors. We're going to choose the third color along on the top row. Back to our brushes. I'm going to use the medium hard brush. Set it to about 2% size and 100% opacity. Then I'm going to draw a shape in the center. Doesn't matter if, how neat it is at all. Keep it as an ellipse. You might want to just turn it and get it in the right position initially. Then you can stretch it, pull it, find what you think is roughly the right kind of size and shape. I don't want it to go too high up or too low down. You select. Then I'm going to go to the adjustments, liquify. I'm going to go to the push, put it at something quite big. So maybe about 70% pressure at 70, no distortion or momentum. I just want to push it down from the top a bit, push it up from the bottom a bit. And we're sort of getting this slightly flattened out top area and slightly flattened out bottom area. We don't want to do that too much, however. So that's just about right. Deselect. Again, if you're not happy with it, you can just resize it slightly, reposition it, get it just right before you move forward. Stay on the same layer. We're going to go back to the medium hard brush or stay on it rather, but with the settings at 2% size, 100% opacity. And we're going to go into the top section up here and just put a little dot. Now from this point, I'm just going to do a line up and then I'm going to start just sort of fragmenting it or creating segments from this point. So we'll just do four initially, something like this. And then at the top section of each, we don't want to make it too round. So I'll zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just adding a little bit of a rise, a bump, here at the top. So we're starting to get some of the description of the back part of that pumpkin. Zoom in again, and we're going to do the same here. Even though we've not got a guideline, we can just sort of round it in. Maybe a little bit more subtle than that, even something like this and something on this side, similar. 
So we're starting to suggest the kind of division of the pumpkin there a little bit more. And obviously we can go with the eraser, set to something like the medium hard brush, put it quite small so you can control it, be neat, 2% size, 100% opacity. And then just so we can have a real good sense of it, we can start to remove some of these little initial lines that we put in. And we can really see what we're wor working with and how it's looking, something like this. Again, don't worry about the little anomalies. If the shape's gone a bit strange, we can always refine and improve that later. The main thing is we're getting that kind of a form at the back, back to the brush. And we're just gonna change that slightly so it curves in more there as well, because it's got a little bit of a, a steep edge to it. We want it just gently curving in it. Again, back to the eraser and just tidy that up so it's not a completely straight line like so. Then I'm going to go in and just draw a bit of a, a straight line underneath this section. And then I'm going to have a round bit that creeps up and then comes down into this sort of area. And again, here, so it curves up before it comes back down like that. And it's not even, and I'm happy about that. Now, when I come to this section, I'm going to create a front shape and another one like that. And then simply, we just bring this down, bring this down, and bring that down. Just like we did at the top, we can just go and curve these in slightly, create some of these nice round shapes. They're going to be largely in the shadow, but you might as well get them looking a bit better. And then similar with the eraser, just go and tidy them up a little bit until we're left with just those really nice curves and segment shapes. Now, if there are any bits like here that you're not quite happy with, we'll just go in and raise that. If it's a bit too wobbly for your liking, then go in there and just round it off a bit more. Again, nothing about this needs to be perfect. It is a pumpkin. It's meant to be a bit organic, and that's absolutely fine. I'm just going to create a new layer, but then also go back to layer three. Selection, automatic, and tap in one of the areas. We can select all of the shapes, in fact, Then we can go back up to layer four, tap on the layer and fill. Now it's going to fill everything apart from the outlines, as you can see, which comes in really helpful when we start adding shading and textures and other things. We're going to leave both of them visible for the time being though. Okay, we're going to create a new layer, layer five, and I'm going to tap on it and put on the clipping mask, which means it's going to be linked to everything that's on the layer below it, which is layer four. So anything we add to layer five now will be completely contained within the shapes and it won't go either over the edge over here or even on the gaps. So we're on layer five. We're gonna to go to the zombie skin within materials. We're gonna to go to the force color on the top row. I'm gonna put the size at around 15% and opacity at 30, uh, 60%. And I'm just gonna brush in a texture here initially. So we're using default brushes in this tutorial, but if you'd like to bring your art to the next level, you could try premium brushes from Brush Galaxy. Brush Galaxy enables you to unlock over 50,000 premium Procreate brushes for a fraction of the price. You can access over 20 different categories of brushes like fur, lettering, nature, and animals, and many others. So for example, sometimes I struggle with things like grass textures and a quick search here on Brush Galaxy and you get access to page after page. Really interesting, great grass stamps, and grass textures for you to experiment with. Start now and get the first seven days for free. Join thousands of other artists using Brush Galaxy tools to bring that art to the next level. The link is in the comments and in the description. Then I'm gonna to go to the eraser. I'm gonna set the eraser to the materials zombie skin. I'm gonna have it at around 10% size, 30% opacity, and again, I'm just going to go in and take this segment, for example, I'm just going to erase the center portion of it and also prioritize the, the erasing of that purple kind of near the bottom section. So it's got a dark strip up the middle and it's darker towards the lower area. Move to this one. Well, certainly it's going to be darker in the lower section for the most part, but maybe I'll just shift that slightly towards this side. Then go to the next one again, shadow in the lower section, but predominantly on this side. 
and then the next one just again a bit on that side over to this one i'm going to prioritize the shadow to the lower part and this side that points towards the center and then for the outer edge one like that now when it comes to the top view well we don't see much of that we can just remove some of that have it a bit darker because we're going to add a different color in the mix up there back to our colors we'll go for the fifth color along to begin with and we'll just bring some of that into the top section not too much and we can have it creeping back there as well maybe just a hint of it coming around here around the edge just a hint more not too much we'll go for a much lighter one we'll go for the eighth color we don't have a color on the end so it's the eighth color along turn it down to about five percent size this time and lower on the opacity to around 30 and well i'm just going to prioritize some of this near the top we're going to have a strong light coming down from the very top that's really bouncing off these top areas and in the back there we're going to have pretty much just highlights we're going to use our blur to really give it the impression of a slight depth of field so we, this isn't going to be a sharp later on but initially we're just going to keep adding the detail creep it around at the very tops just a hint and the top edges here now we can go back in with something like the organic rainforest brush i'll reset it so it's back how it was then I'm going to show you how I'm ending it. So I'm going to change the spacing from 27 to about 40%. I'm going to use this eighth color along. I'm going to have it down at 1% size and I'm going to have it quite low at around 20% opacity. And I'm going to a bit more manually now, just start to go in there and just tap in some of this texture because really I want to introduce more gaps, almost like the, the pitted kind of black shapes are black gaps are going to become an important part of it and we're putting them in through a kind of negative space and just start to tap some of this in now we're not only adding that light color we could go back in with the purple the fourth color and we could continue to add some of this too if we feel we need to there'll be a transition point where it goes from this light blue into the purple i might even go to the purple and add another color sometimes this happens as you go part way through going to add it onto the end of the middle row so that's the seventh color along and yeah I'm going to use that now just to bring that texture down because we're not going to have much of the, the greeny blue light in these lower sections but I want to continue that texture a little bit more just sort of blend it out back to the eighth color on the top row and again we can just continue adding this texture And again, back to that purple on the end of the middle row. Well, it's the bottom row. It's normally the middle row. I don't have that many colors for this tutorial. It's a more limited color palette. Quite an intense colors, but there's not too many colors we need for the palette. We can just bring this down, have it soften out. And you can start to see some of the texture coming through, which is great. I'm also going to move to the white, or it's almost white. It's not quite. It's the ninth color on the top row. And... We're really going to bring out some of that bright intensity near the very top. Perhaps we'll just turn the size of that up a little bit for the back areas. So 2%. Really want to just drive that highlight in. Okay, I'm going to put layer 3 back in to make it visible. Now I'm going to go to layer 4 which was separate from layer three, but I'm gonna to go to layer four and merge it down. Now you're gonna lose a lot of the, the separation of those shapes, but it, it actually works. It's useful to have them separate just to help you really understand the different areas. But when you merge them down, it just softens them all together, which is a much better effect. And I'm gonna take this layer and I'm gonna merge it down with layer three. And now all of the pumpkin so far is on one layer. I'm gonna to go to my selection, freehand, and I'm just going to grab, not the front sections, but so I'm going to circle around those. And I'm going to grab the back part and close the loop. So it's mainly just this back edge. I'm going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur. And I'm going to blur it in to about the 4% and deselect. And it just creates more of a soft focus, a slight change of the depth of field. 
a bit more clarity here at the front and just yeah, pushes it back a little bit there. Create a new layer, go in with the soft brush with an airbrushing and I'm gonna go in with the ninth color on the top row. 3% size and around 30% opacity. Zoom in a touch, about 2% size and about 30% opacity. And I'm just gonna create some real strong highlights along some of these top edges. I might also go to the, I think I'm also on this top layer, gonna to go to the fifth color with a soft brush at the bottom part of 2% and 20% opacity. And I feel I just need to start separating some of these segments a little bit more again. Not much, just a touch. Maybe the back ones, they need a bit more of a, a clearer division. Again, we don't wanna make them this separation too vivid, too clear, because it will take away from that soft focus for the background area. Maybe we can increase the size now up to 2% and just go over it just to soften that in slightly. I'm going to move along or move back actually to the second colour on the top row and in that centre area I'm just going to bring in a dark shape for the very centre. Perhaps I need to go back down to the 1%, perhaps I'll put it up to about 50. I just want to build in kind of like a dark shape here in this top central area. Just really a platform like the cap where the stalk grows from. I'm going to move to the third color, still with the soft brush, 2% size, 50% opacity, and I'm just going to start building up the stalk, create a little bit of a top ellipse, and then pull that down. It's going to just lean and then kick out when it comes down to this section. Perhaps I'll just increase the size up to 2%, 70% or so opacity, and just start to lock this in. Change color, perhaps we'll go for that end purple. On the lower row, 1% size, low on the opacity, maybe about 15. And then we can just soften it at the very edge, add a bit of a highlight. Add another line that comes down and kicks out, and then maybe another one over here. Maybe also go in with the six color on the top row. Maybe just introduce that in the lower sections, joins the kind of cap. And then maybe when it comes down in here, we've got highlights that just sit atop the where the stalk meets the pumpkin here as well. And also go maybe to the ninth colour, the eighth colour rather. Just soften some of that in. It's not a major element, but it, it does need to be accounted for. The stalk doesn't go directly into the actual pumpkin as such. It has this little section. And I'm just going to do a series of kind of shapes there at the very top, which is going to be picking up the highlight from the strong light that's above too. Stay on the same colour. Now between some of the pumpkin segments, there is actually going to be a section that kicks back some light as well. So I'm just going to have that as a separate area that is just kicking back some of the light like that. Perhaps I'll even put it up from 1% to 2%. It's not going to be visible too many places, but certainly here at the front, I'll just bring some of that highlight around here as well. I'm going to change back to the organic rainforest brush again, and I'm going to go in with the light purple, the end of the second row. And yeah, I'm just going to bring in some of this. So it's set to, well, I'll put it on the lowest part of 2%, in fact, and about 25% opacity. Yeah, we'll just bring in some highlight around here. I'm going to take that layer and merge it down. Why not? Keep things simple. And then similar again, I'm going to go with the selection freehand. And I'm just going to go all the way around the edge of this shape. But then I'm, crucially, I'm just going to clip off 
the very edges. This is a round shape and really we just want, close the loop, we just want this section to be the, the bit that's crisp. The outer edges are going to be fading away so the depth of field is going to make them appear more blurred. So we'll, again we'll go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and we're just going to blur it in to about 4% and deselect. And it just brings this part forward and pushes all those other areas just a little bit more away. It's important we have all of that on one layer because we're going to cut out sections now. So we're going to go in with the eraser, set to airbrushing, medium hard brush, small size, 2% and 100% opacity. And we're going to have to just be a little bit careful and we're going to decide what our face is going to be like. So I'm going to cut out a little triangle for the nose and I'm not going to do anything too unconventional. It's going to stick pretty squarely to the kind of format, the expectations that you would have of a Halloween pumpkin. So a little bit traditional. So just some soft triangle shapes. Zoom in if you need to, just to make sure you don't leave any of those little blips, those little pieces left. I'll do another one over here. Try and keep it roughly symmetrical. Might be a bit difficult to see some of this on camera. But yeah, slightly rounded. Now you, you could create another layer. Go in with a black and an appropriate brush. So you could go to airbrushing, medium hard brush, small size, 100% opacity. And you could draw this out initially. Draw your smiley face. Just to give you a point of reference. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Again, go back to layer three, back with the eraser. And you can use this as a guideline. Small size again, so I'm going to put it down to 1% just for the very corners. But I think the guideline can be quite useful because we're going to have sections that cut off from that four teeth now. So we'll bring it in so far, maybe to, for me, about the middle point of the eye, then cut down and across and then back up again. But yours doesn't have to be the same at all. Back down and across, back up. I'm going to have a couple that Again, they're not evenly spaced out, they're quite close to each other, and then up to that corner, down, create another one that's just in that area. And then up here, and get rid of that top version, which is only there as a, a guideline. And then on this layer, we can just continue to erase that gap, tidy it up if you feel inclined. We could, I suppose, just go to the selection automatic, grab it for the most part. That should be quite effective in doing that tap on the layer and clear and it should get rid of that. Having said that, it tends to leave little anomalies. So we're probably really just best going in with the eraser still and just keeping it quite manual. Now, when I've zoomed in, you can see some of the little imperfections that are there. We can always go and refine those later on if we need to. They're still visible after we've added other elements. I'm not too worried about them yet. They're just little artifacts that appear because of the process that we've used. I'm not too bothered. Okay, so that's our basic shape and face. I'm going to go to our layer and slide and duplicate it. The bottom version, just so we can really identify it, I'm going to, well, I'm going to go to the transform first and just pinch it in, move it, pinch it in so it's smaller initially, and then deselect. I'm going to go to the colors, hue saturation, or the, the adjustments rather, hue saturation and brightness, and just change the hue and the brightness so that I can just see it initially and see where it's placed. Again, back to the transform. And now we can just, what we want to do is obviously create the sense that it's been carved and there's a little bit of depth to it. Now you need to line up the teeth, I suppose, are the most important aspect. If you have it over here, then it's gonna look a bit off. Move it up to about there, I think. I think that looks about right. Maybe off to the side slightly. But the colors are not quite right. So on that bottom layer, I'm gonna put on the alpha lock. I'm gonna go back to my brushes, use the soft brush with an airbrushing, Back to my colors. I'm going to use the fourth color, 3% size, 15% opacity. And well, I can just start to build in some of these tones in here. And we don't have to take any great care with this because, well, alpha lock is on. That'll do initially. We're going to create another layer, but we're going to put it underneath layer three. Now this is only going to be relevant for the center area. So we'll stay on the soft brush with an airbrushing. We'll go to the second color. Might as well put it up 10% or so, 100% opacity. And we're just going to fill in initially that central shape. Go to the 
third color, turn it down to about 40% opacity and about 6% size. And we could just start to shut down some of that brightness. Now we want that brightness, but not, not quite to that degree. Keep it slightly more focused in the center. So we can just shut this down a bit more. We want it there, but not quite that much. Bring it down into the lower part a bit more. Tap it in a few times. We can always go over the yellow, bring it back in more. I'd rather start subtle. Then we'll go perhaps to the first color on the bottom row. 2% size, well, we'll try about 15% opacity and we're just gonna add a bit of the yellow coming through in places. Tapping it in, maybe we'll increase the size actually up to about five. And just bring out the, the area where the nose is a bit more, maybe that corner of that eye. That's starting to work, I think. Tap it in a bit more. Okay, we're gonna go back to layer three, this layer. And I'm going to bring out some a variation of tones in there as well. So I'm going to go back to the soft brush or stay with the soft brush rather. I'm going to go use the third color, turn the brush down, 2% size, 15% opacity. Maybe I can just at the top of the teeth, brighten them up a little bit. We're just going to create a little bit of variation I think is important. Bottom of that nose maybe. Then we may, maybe change to the sixth color in the corners, bring some of that tone in here a little bit. Back a color, so the fifth color, 3% size, 15% opacity still. Yeah, bring a bit more of that intensity in there. I think it warrants it. Now on that layer, we don't need any clarity. So I'm going to tap on it again, turn off the alpha lock. I'm going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and just blur that in to about the 2%. And that's starting to work a little bit better, I think. I think we can probably take the two versions of layer three and merge them together. So the top one, tap on it and merge down. Again, the run one layer. We might even merge it down. So we have all of the pumpkin on one layer. I'm gonna create a new layer, but put it underneath layer five. Go back to my brushes. In fact, stay on the soft brush with an airbrushing. Go to the first color on the top row, 20% size, 15% opacity. And I'm just gonna build in a section down here where we've got the, the shadow. Perhaps I'll then go in with the fourth color, build in some of that purple a little bit on the edges, just soften it in slightly. Back to the black, turn it down, 10% size, 15% opacity and just yeah, a little bit darker where it meets the pumpkin. And to be honest, the pumpkin itself, tap on it, put on alpha lock, with the, the black still, maybe lower on the percentage of the size rather. So 5% size, 15% opacity. And we'll probably just need to shut down some of the light, the bottom of the shape there where it meets the ground a little bit more. It's a little bit bright. Let's just curve that around, darken it up. I'll go to the top layer, duplicate it, bottom version, tap on it, turn off the alpha lock, transform, flip it vertically and then bring it down into the shadow area so that you kind of lose the edges anyway. You can't see the crispness of it there much. I do think it's a little bit too bright for down there. So I'll perhaps go in with the six color, soft brush, 2% or 2% size, maybe 30% opacity. I'm just gonna lose some of the brightness to begin with. Perhaps I need to turn that up 60% or so. I think I just like to dampen down the brightness in the reflection. I don't want it to really represent the brightest of lights. I want it to be there, but pretty subtle by comparison like that. And then we can go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and we'll blur that whole layer out to about the 15%. Might be going with the eraser to the soft brush, 5% size, 30% opacity. Maybe just reduce the impact of that at the corners a little bit. I definitely want it to be there, but not too much like that. Then to the top, create a new layer, and I'm gonna put a layer underneath layer five. And we're gonna go in now, I'm gonna create some really nice smoke around the whole thing, just to give it a really atmospheric feel. And I'm gonna go in with the soft brush. I'm gonna use initially the sixth color on the top row. I'm gonna have it at around 10% size, but really quite low at around 
percent opacity and let's just think carefully about where we want to add some of the smoke so i definitely want to creep it in around this edge so i'm going to start tapping it in and bringing it down and i'm going to bring it in and around this bottom corner too tap it in a bit maybe increase the size 15 percent a few more taps of this initially that just starts us off with some of this light color then we're going to reduce it down 2% size still at the 15% opacity and I'm just going to start bringing in some waves some curls I'll just bring in a wave there maybe we can have one I mean you don't have to be overly sort of fussy about this it can just go in and out like this double it up have a lines that twist in and out of each other curve around wiggle around curve around like this Double them up. Just creating really some, not too much effort put into this, just creating some lines, some swirls and things, double them up, whatever you think will add to the scene. Then, once you've got so far, I mean, it's not very refined at all. We're gonna to go to the adjustments, liquify, put it on the push, put the size, I would suggest maybe about 30. Pressure 70, no distortion or momentum. We'll zoom in and we can just start pushing these around so that any shapes you've got there can just become, you know, twist it around, for example, push it around until you get something that looks more naturalistic. This is something that you can, you know, really play around with and just experiment. And then you can go back to the brush and use these as inspiration now. So we're still gonna have it at the 2% size, but we could start to maybe just fill in some areas where we want them to all bunch together. Got some gaps between some of the, the shapes, the lines, and you could just color them in. Again, continue some more lines. Now this is a background layer behind the pumpkin. So we could always go over and add one over the top that just has little wisps that Cut in front too, but initially we're just creating some ones for the background. Add some that curve in here. Again, double them up. Things look stronger when you go over them and make it look like a very deliberate line. If you just have one line on its own, it doesn't look so good, but add a few adjoining shapes just to really emphasize it more. And that could improve it. Again, go back in with the liquify and take whatever you've just added and further push it around if need be. Whatever helps, push it off the edge, swirl it in, whatever. Go in with the selection, freehand. Maybe some of these we could just, as they go further away, grab that section, close the loop. Adjustments, goes in blur, slide it, blur it across, maybe about 7% for example pushes it further back, transform, or rather selection freehand, section here, close it, adjustments, Gaussian blur, blur it, 4%, deselect, and you can see the effect starting to build up. So I'm just gonna circle some of these in. Uh, perhaps I'll go back to the smudge with this soft brush, just push some of these around. If I want to just blur them out slightly, but without blurring the large sections, I can just go in there, tap in with the smudge tool, these around, soften them in, just lightly lays over them, raise over the surface. And these ones just lightly go over these, it will soften them in. I'm going to go and create a layer on top. I'm going to basically do the same thing again. So still with a soft brush with an airbrushing at, well, I'm going to have it at around the lowest part of 2% size, 15% opacity, and we'll stick with the six color along and yeah we'll have some shapes that just kind of twist and turn here in the foreground two lines that kind of overlap that roughly kind of move together but aren't completely in line with each other maybe a third one maybe one coming from over here and merging with it and twisting in different ways there's no right and wrong with this just experiment ones from over here twist and turn another one that 
combines with it. Another one over here. Then we'll go to the adjustments, liquify. I'm going to put the liquify up to about 30 and pressure to down to about 50. And then we can just shake them, push them around, twist them in. We'd even go to the expand and we could, you know, put the size up to maybe 50%, pressure 50. And you can just play around with some of these a little bit more. Back to the push. 50 is a bit strong actually so let's like try with more about 30 twist them in just to create a bit more chaos with the twisting so it's not just your your own line it's you know just a bit more random if you twist it i think that can work really effectively and again with the smudge smudge is set to the soft brush two percent size 90 percent strength opacity and yeah you can just tap this to soften some of these mush them together a little bit more perhaps Back in with the brush, maybe put it up, top end of 2% and you, there's nothing wrong with going and just gently shading some of these in, filling in some of the gaps almost. A bit trailing off, same over here. Perhaps we go to that layer 10 on the alpha lock, go to something like the purple on the end of the lower row, still with a soft brush with an airbrushing, and I put it up to like 4% size and we could just go over some of these areas with that purple. It's not very high, it's only at 15% opacity. Just change the quality of it from that greeny blue to a slight purple. Perhaps just the purple, the warmer colours from inside the pumpkin are just picking up on it a little bit more than the colder colours of some areas. I'm going to go and create another layer on top. I'm going to change the blend mode from normal to add. I'm going to stick with this soft brush, but I'm going to go back to the sixth colour and these are just going to build in some of the highlights now. So the lowest part of 2%, 15% opacity. And again, we can just go in and it's really going to stand out by contrast. It's going to be more noticeable. So just pick out some of the shapes that you like the best, that you think are working. You can add new ones, obviously, but... If there's any bits that you like, you can just use this to bring it out even more. I think something more prominent here, so maybe like a twist spiral coming in here. And then sort of merging with some of this as well. And then we can just go in and really strengthen some of this up if we need to. Maybe go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and just blur that in slightly, 5%. Back in again. Use it to shade in some of the gaps as well. This is just something that's, you know, you can, you might find a little bit trickier, but to get it to the point where you're absolutely 100% happy with it. But it's, it's something that I think is really quite fun, actually, just to play around with, experiment with. Try the different tools, see what you like and what works for you. You can keep it relatively subtle and simple, or you can really make it quite elaborate and lots of interesting shapes in the mix there too. So I'm just seeing lines there that are subtle. I'm just going over them, pronouncing them slightly more, bringing out some definition, make them slightly less subtle. Just exaggerate this twist in the center there, maybe a little bit more. It's got a slightly stylized kind of look, a little bit over the top. It's got an element that's believable and realistic, but then it is slightly exaggerated too, I'd say. Just knocking on the door of over the top, stylized, a gentle knock. And again, adjustments, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to continue to blur that, maybe not as much, about 3%.
I'm going to go back to layer six. I'm going to change this brighter color, which is the it's the eighth color. Fill with a soft airbrush. Put it at four percent size, five percent opacity, and yeah, I'm just going to build in a lighter glow on some of these edges. Perhaps even put the brush size up to ten percent. Slap it in a few more times here. Back down again, 4%. Perhaps that's a little bit bright. Maybe the one back from that, which is the seventh. Soften it in slightly. Maybe just some suggestions of things that come this area as well, not too much. Just some subtle sense of wisps in the background there, perhaps too well defined, but just hints of it. Back up to the top layer, just exaggerate some of these a little bit. So I've moved it all the way up to, well, perhaps 27 is a bit strong, 20%. Bring out some of them, especially in this area, this sort of region. I want some of this to be a bit sharper. So I'm just going in with a brighter color bringing it out a bit more and we'll do the same over here too just a hint more and again we can go in with the adjustments liquify and just yeah push that around twist it in if you need to whatever works plus the smudge is just getting a little bit strong it's only well don't need to have it that strong, do about 40% strength, 2% size, and I can just go in and soften it in, even then, if I feel like it's getting a little bit out of control. As soon as it goes back here, it needs to be a little bit softer in focus. Back to the pumpkin, turn off the alpha lock, back in with the selection, freehand, and I still think there's just an area in this bottom area, especially that I can just go in, grab, that bit, so we've just got that thin area there. Adjustments, Gaussian blur, and just blur that up to about 5%. Softens it in, I think is a bit better. Stay on the pumpkin, go to the end purple, stay on the soft brush, 2% size, 20% strength. And yeah, I think I'm just gonna build in a bit more of that light for the purple as well. Perhaps 2% size, a bit small. Well, the top end of 2% will work. Bring a bit more of that light into some areas for the purple. Not too much. And over on this side too. However, I'm gonna go in with the first color on the top row and just maybe just take away a little bit of that light purple in this area, just to make it a bit more subtle. It's a combination of just adding in some areas and taking away in others. And I think that's overall working quite a bit better. Okay, I'm going to leave this tutorial here at this point. I hope you've enjoyed following along. And if Halloween is something you celebrate, well, I hope you have a fantastic time when the time comes. Thanks so much for watching. Do check out my other videos and I shall catch you back here soon.